I think you all know Abdul Maraj pretty well, but he's uh, another staunch, wonderful uh, Prabhupada disciple who came to the Krishna conscious movement back in uh, 1969, I believe, almost the time I was born. Um, he's done so much service. He was the uh, powerhouse behind the bliss bars. Uh, he preaches nonstop. He's fearless. Uh, he's a beautiful, soft-hearted uh, devotee and, all, and has a very particular and very unique preaching style, which we love to hear and always makes me feel very peaceful. When I, I listen to him, I always feel whatever he's saying, I always feel happy and in a good place. So he's speaking on the same subject, but I can assure you it's going to be a very different approach, which is kind of almost illustrating what harmony is. We're going to hear about harmony in Guru Dave's instructions on harmony from two very, very different people, but the melody that they both are going to sing for Guru Dave through their respective flutes, I know in advance is going to be totally different yet harmonious simultaneously. So I am with great, oh, he's had wonderful association by the way, because not only did he have association with Srila Prabhupada, but he also said associated with Srila Gorgavinda Maharaj and also with our beloved Guru Dave. So he's had amazing association over the years. So I'm handing over the Zoom Yas San to you Maharaj with a very warm, warm welcome. And I'm going to ask you to unmute and I shall then mute to myself. Haribol. Om Maganata Vadandasya Giranjana Salakaya Chaksuru Marita Minatas Mai Shri Gurave Namaha Guru Gura Chandraya Ladi Katada Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tada Bhaktaya O Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yanabutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Shwa Bhadati Bandi si Krishna Chaitanya Nitananda Saurida Gorio Kushpantra Chitto Sando Tamunu Do Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nitananda Jai Dwaita Chandra Jai Gola Bhakta Guru Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare So living up to my namesake um, I'm a little bit unconventional at times uh, to the consternation of Yasarananda. And uh, some things may not be in the exact parameters that um, was set here, but anyway, I'm going to just going to go ahead. Um, from my recollection and my experiences, Sri Guru Dave always was saying, give up these false egos. Give up these false egos. So if we have no ahankara, then our relationships will always be, uh, you know, formidable, wonderful. So we just have to give up this false ego that I'm the body, I'm the mind, and just concentrate on being the nitya sevak of Radharani, of Nityananda, of Goranga. Also, Guru Dev said, no criticizing, no complaining, always chants. So those three principles should be adopted by everyone who wants to find peace and harmony in their life. And of course, not to criticize is a tough one for many people, including myself. Um, and then lastly, uh, at least in my mind is the principle of the third verse of Shikshasta come to down the peace in the chain and throw out the peace. You know, not Amani and Amade and Kirtan Yasanadi. To always give all respect to others and don't demand any respect for yourself. In other words, be humble and meek, humility being equated with bhakti. So, those are the basic principles to follow if you want to have a harmonious life in Krishna consciousness, if you follow those to the T. So what I wanted to do, um, because we say example is greater than precept, right? So Gurudev, you know, his life was uh, laid out for us. You know, his words and his life were one. So I started thinking about different things that came up in the course of Gurudev's preaching. So I thought maybe I'll just relate uh, this principle of harmony because on one side, harmony is good, but on another side, 
um, you know, things may not be tolerable on a sedantic principle uh, of, you know, absolute consideration of how to act. So here, here goes. One, in a harmonious, in the relationships between Iskan and the Gaudiya Mats, there are many uh, offenses committed against our Gurudev. Yet he was tolerant, which you know falls in line with that third verse of Sikshastakam. Um, because he said that we're all in one family. So even though, you know, there are very terrible things done. And Gurudev said it was never done before in history where Vaishnavas impede the preaching of another Vaishnava. So Gurudev was very, very tolerant in this regard. Although he said the dust of his feet may not be so tolerant, but he was very tolerant. Another uh, instance where he couldn't uh, tolerate was the uh, principle of sannyas, of somebody falling down from sannyas. And I remember when uh, Sri Prabhupada initiated Revati Nandana, who was still is a very handsome uh, man. So he told him, if you can't follow sannyas, then at least get a good wife. But in Gurudev's case, a sannyasi, particular sannyasi that fell, he gave them only 10 days to return to him and everything would be okay. If that wasn't followed, then he was like a ship at sea without a, a rudder. So that in that instance, you know, you cannot, uh, you cannot bend Gurudev. He was very stiff, very hard. And even myself, when I was in Los Angeles and Mott, I got a call, the only call I ever got from Gurudev in the late night regarding the same person who had fallen from sannyas. So um, anyway, I just remember hearing Gurudev's very tough, very strict principles. So, you cannot equate harmony with sentimentalism. That would be wrong. Then another thing was, uh, came to my mind was rasa. You know, there's still arguments and debates over the rasa of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, if you go to the book, Gauravani Pacharani, wonderfully published by the GVP, which you know means our Shamrani Didi and others. In that last chapter, Gudev gave his synopsis, final synopsis of Prabhupada's Ras as a majority. But nonetheless, in a harmonious mood, Srila Gurudev did say that all the Rasas are contained within Madhuri Ras. So even if somebody is convinced that Prabhupada is a coward boy. Um, we can accommodate it. And Gurudev said, when they come to realize the truth by their bhakti, then they will understand. So Gurudev was very firm in his convictions, but still he opened the door so that there wouldn't be, you know, fighting over this issue. As we know, our whole, whole section of our Gaudiya Math broke off over this issue. And, um, and it was very confounding. And I, I myself, I know I was actually, actually living in that ashram where this uh, idea of Prabhupada being a coward boy came up. And I, I did not go back after the whole flurry of controversy came out. So that's like a an ongoing test right now for harmony. How do we harmonize with those who have that idea that Prabhupada is a coward boy? And those who are 
you know, sincerely accepting Gurudev's statements to the opposite, that he's a Madhurya Manjari. So we do want to harmonize, we want to be friendly with people who are of that conviction, but also stand our ground. Now there's another principle Gurudev mentioned in one time class in Bajra, which he could not tolerate. There was no sentiment or harmony for people who were smoking marijuana, or we could say pot. And Gurudev made a statement that they are no longer my devotees. There was no tolerance, because this is our basic principles, no illicit sex, no gambling, no meat eating, and no intoxication. So Gurudev was very tough, and we know Guru can be hard like a thunderbolt and soft like a rose. So, you know, his dealings are everything in between those two. So, you know, we want to look at each case individually and see uh, the example Gurudev gave as far as, you know, the principle of Trinadapis and Chena and Siddhanta. It's like Prabhupada, Ashita Prabhupada also one time, he said the people who are keeping long hairs are no longer my disciples. And my, many of my God brothers after the years, they all grew their hair back. Now, despite what Prabhupada said. Another thing was 64 rounds. You know, Mahaprabhu did not accept anything from anyone who was not chanting a lakh, Lagashwar. And Gurudev also emphasized that 64 rounds is ideal. But I recall one time he came to Florida, my god brother's wife, Gurudev asked her to chant 16 rounds. And she said, no way, impossible. So he asked her, well, can you chant eight rounds? And she just shook her head. Gurudev said, well, how about four rounds? Mm -hmm. and he even got down to one round, she still couldn't do it. So Gurudev just said, well, can you just say Hare Krishna? <laughs> so he was very liberal and tolerant, but you know, we, we know his, what his ideal is. Same as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's. Then um, there was another instance when Gurudev was in Los Angeles. The leaders of the LA temple offered to bring Gurudev to the temple. Oh, and Gurudev was very happy, wonderful, sure. But they said, without your devotees, just you. Gurudev said, what? No, impossible. You invite me, you invite my devotees. What's the problem? So, you know, there was always some kind of an agenda uh, coming up like that from uh, our former society. And Guru uh, Dev drew the line. He said, no, my devotees not, cannot come, I will not come. So you may say, well, why didn't Guru Dev kind of harmonize it somehow? No, he had strict principles he followed. And that, that's going to come up more and more uh, in these examples I was recalling. Then uh, the same leaders of the LA temple, remember they came, uh, one of the, actually was, no, it wasn't one of the LA leaders, it was uh, one of the Ritwik leaders, proponents of the philosophy that Prabhupada is the final Acharya. There was going to be no Acharyas after Prabhupada and through Ritwik initiation, we all can connect to Prabhupada. So Shiro Gurudev was speaking in his room in Los Angeles at a hotel and Madhu Maharaj was there and he was speaking on a very, you know, elevated topic. So this Ritwik devotee walked in and Shita Madhu Maharaj says, oh, Gurudev, no, 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 no. I don't speak on this topic. So what did Gurudev do? Uh, he said, no, I can speak whatever I want. Don't tell me what I can't say. <laughs> so he continued to speak. The thing is, the Guru, Shila Gurudev is like Antaryami, he knows the heart. And obviously he saw something in the heart of this devotee. 
you know, I won't mention his name, but I was also very friendly with him. I liked him. Um, but still, he had this rhetoric uh, front. Then another thing was uh, how we tolerate devotees who are arguing over Vaikuntha, whether we fall or don't fall. You know? So when Tamal Krishna and others invited Gurudev to come on a tour of Iskand temples, they would pay for everything, they would give him rooms, everything. They said, the only thing we require is you don't speak about Jiva Tattva, about, you know, not falling from Vaikuntha. So how did Gurudev harmonize this? He didn't. He said, no, I cannot compromise our Siddhanta. I will not go. So Gurudev had these principles which cannot bend. He can only speak the truth. So that, that tour never happened. Another time in Badger, Gurudev was walking and some, but he asked, well, Gurudev, why you can't allow some of the ladies to walk with us, with you? So how did Gurudev treat this question? Could ladies come on a walk with their guru? Gurudev said, no. If I do this, then many other sannyasis after I leave, they will also walk with women and then they will blame me for starting the example. So that was another instance. Then we had a temple in LA, it's no longer there, unfortunately, or fortunately, but um, we had the idea and it was, I guess, my fault because we had a huge Shiva Lingam, which I had got from a friend. I had thought to put it outside in the garden, but the temple president wanted to make um, the entryway, which was walk, when you walked it up the stairs, it would be there in the entryway. So what was Gurudev's reaction to this situation? Would he harmonize it or would he walk? So Gurudev said, if you install the Shiva Lingam, then I will not be coming to LA again. <laughs> so although, <clears throat> although we know she was a great Vaishnava, Gurudev didn't want that example in his mind where there was a Shiva Lingam at the entry. So we dispensed with the whole idea. Then um, there was another situation which is quite uh, um, disturbing to some people. It was so disturbing. In fact, we lost, you could say, our whole cash cow in Los Angeles. Everything was paid for in Los Angeles. We had, it seemed like we had no worries. But when this incident took place, our big mama who was supplying all the money left. And it had to do with an English devotee female who was preaching also around the world, touring and speaking about many intimate rustic topics to the Sangha. And she was married to uh, another English devotee, very nice devotee very intelligent, but she was traveling separate from him. And in the course of uh, preaching in Los Angeles, coming to Los Angeles, he, uh, she fell in love with an American devotee. They both uh, hooked up and uh, their relationship, what do you think Gurudev's reaction was? How would he deal with this? from the principle we were talking about. He was, he was very strict. He said, wherever these two are, I don't want to go. I don't want to see them again. So he cut off the whole relationship and it was such a shock because this girl had been very intimate, with, very close to Gurudev. So it was such a shock that, um, 
our funding for the temple just was cut off by, perhaps you know who it is. So that was kind of a uh, strange event, turn of events, because Gurudev had actually told that boy who the English female preacher linked up with to be the president of the LA temple. And he even told him who sh he should marry. And one thing is, and we can recount many instances, if you disobey Gurudev, his order, then your life is lost. And there's other instances which come to mind, but I'm not gonna go over them. So the order of Guru is supposed to be one's life and soul. So if he ever gives an order, you have to completely stick to it. So then there was so another instance that I remembered in Los Angeles when she, uh, Mangala Maharaj came from the, uh, from the, uh, another mat, uh, like Balabhachirtha Maharaj, he was his god buddy. So Balabhachirtha Maharaj, Balabhachirtha Maharaj, their followers, disciples of Daitha Maharaj. So he came to Los Angeles and how did Guru Dave treat him? Very respectfully. And we had a program, Guru Dave had him speak first. He said, oh, Mangala Maharaj, he knows such, so much more than me. He praised him up and down. So they had a very nice relationship. And I wish I knew Bengali or Hindi because they had a, one time Mangala Maharaj said, said to Guru Dave, you know, uh, something about Jiva Tatwa. And, you know, Guru Dave said, what? So they had a little debate going, not really hard debate, just soft debate, but I couldn't understand the Bengali. But anyway, Mangala Maharaj spoke at the program and most devotees seemed like they were just tolerating because <laughs> they were just waiting for Gurudev to speak. So when Gurudev, uh, after Mangala Maharaj finished, then Gurudev spoke and everybody was all ears. But still, nonetheless, he was very loving, affectionate to his um, not exactly God brother, like a God uh, cousin or something. So then there's another instance um, in which harmony actually failed because there had been, there's there'd been a longstanding uh, feud, actually a feud between two months. And they're very closely situated to each other in Navadweep. One is a Chaitanya Saraswati Namad, and one is an Alakeshiva Godimad, but finally Devananda Godimad. So, Guru Dev had, so I, I, before, when I first came to Guru Dev, I heard this topic that somebody said, Rathiyatra Navadweep is a Rasa Bas. So, I was very curious about that because both. I was going to see Gurudev for the first time and there was another Maharaj from the Chaitanya Saraswat Mat who was in Soquel or Santa Cruz, California. So I was gonna go see them both. So we went on a morning walk with Gurudev one morning in Berkeley and he, he walked up to me like straight to, next to my face and said, you have a question? So I say, yeah, actually, good I do. I do. Um, is Rathiyatra Rasa Bas in Navadweep? So I asked him this. His eyes open up. Oh, you want to know? All right. So he turned around, started walking back. We'd already walked about a mile. He turned around, maybe half a mile. So all the way back, he was giving one reason why it's not a Rasabas, after another reason, why it's not a Rasabas, after another reason. And finally, we made it back practically to the, where the cars were. And then he turned around and said, whoa, when I speak like this, I feel like a young man again. 
So he told me that all the senior di disciples of Shira Saraswati Thakur supported him. And uh, he gave reasons like when you bring a Krishna from Kurukshetra into Vrindavan, you know, you're also putting the pull the Rathi Yatra in Vrindavan, and Navadip is not different from Vrindavan. And my Guru Dev Krishna Maharaj was doing this, nobody complained. Why now after he departs? So I became angry like fire when he read this letter by this member of the Chichen Saraswat Ma. So um, that reply was so heavy that the leader of the Chichen Saraswat never came to Gurudev again. And Gurudev, I remember when I was in Rindavan, he was saying to one devotee, I just, you know, kind of saw the interaction. Gurudev was saying, invite him here. If he doesn't come here, I will go there. And I just knew it was this charya from Saraswatma. So it never got better. It only got worse. Gurudev and Maharaj went to offer the respects at the Samadhi Bhakti Rakshira Maharaj. They actually threw him out. Can you imagine? The Aparam. He was ejected and Maharaj had, had to go. Mm -hmm. So we cannot say Gurudev didn't try. He wanted to mend uh, the hurt that was there in this person's heart somehow. But that person was not at all accommodating to Guru, Gurudev's. Um, entrees or attempts. So he attempted to harmonize, but it was not possible because of the because of the scar that was somehow left on the heart of that person or whatever, not a scar, but just the hurt he felt. So then um, another thing regarding the harmony between the, the ISKCON camp and the harm of Dodi so Guru David told, been told by Prabhupada on his final days to come and preach to his disciples. They were not fully trained. They were like monkeys and so on. Um, so Bhagavan Das, who came to Guru Dev and his whole family came, his daughters, his son. So Bhagavan wanted to marshal a cooperation with ISKCON and the Gaudiya Ma, Guru Dev's Gaudiya Ma. We had many meetings in LA at the house of Sri Dayananda Swami to try to work out the details. So Guru Dev was giving Bhagavan the opportunity to render this service. And uh, there were many talks and many leaders came with Sri Dayananda to, to speak with Guru Dev about it. So Guru Dev said, yes, some of you can come and speak in our mods. I can also, if you agree, we will speak in your temples. But again, it's like the opposite side was too hard hearted. They just didn't want to open up and they were afraid. You could see their fear. They did not want Guru Dev speaking in Prabhupada's temples. Although every one of us knows that if Prabhupada was, would have been here, he would have been the first one to open the door to Shri Guru Dev to come and speak. So um, it just didn't happen. And eventually Guru Dev said to tell Bhagavan to forget it. It was like a mission impossible. Whether it will be possible in the future, Time will tell, but um, I was reading Bhakti Bhagavan Bharti Maharaj's recollection of the past when the Gaudi Yamats were like one because Vaman Maharaj, Bhakti Vedanta Vaman Maharaj, whose uh, disappearance today is today, appearance day is today. When he was a young boy, he would go to one month of another group 
sangha and pick vegetables as much as he wanted and bring it back to the Devananda Gaudiya monk. But there was complete harmony between the, the two groups. So nobody objected, why are you taking vegetables from our garden? You have your own garden. You know? No, it was love and trust. And this is what was also spoken visibly by our Srila Prabhupada, that the relationships between Vaishnavas should be based on love and trust. So how can that love come about unless you love Krishna? Unless you love Guranga, Nityananda, Sad Goswamis, all our Vaishnava Charyas. So if that is love, love, love is there, then it's going to happen. Otherwise, if it's, if it's not there in, in the case of one party, it just won't happen. It's got to be a love generated in the hearts of all the Vaishnavas. And then we can cooperate. And if the Sanghas and institutions can cooperate, then Srila Prabhupada himself said there would be a miracle in the world. So he intimated this to Srila Gurudev on his uh, bed in Vrindavan before his departure. So we want to harmonize things and it all comes from love, love of God. Krishna Bhakti, Prema Bhakti. So every one of us individually is responsible to develop Krishna Prema Bhakti, Bhakti Prema. And then all this uh, um, side effects of harmony, unity, cooperation will flourish. But if there's no love of God, then it's very hard to buy even with many meetings, as we saw in Los Angeles with Uday at the house of Parita Nanda, it would not happen. Certainly there was love in Gurudev's heart, but it definitely was not in the um, hearts of those who were from the opposite side of the fence. So that's what I have to say today. Um, thank you very much, Prabhu Yasarananda. All the Sevaks presenting Gurudev's glories and principles in this three days celebrating his uh, glorious disappearance. Vanchakalpa, there's Chakri Pesana Vija, Pritanam Bhavanego, Vaishnavigu, Namuru. Maji, I deeply appreciate and um, absolutely relish that. Um, that sharing, because by the end of Shamarani's exposition, I felt like I understood everything. And by the end of yours, I feel like I understand nothing, but in a really good way. I mean, I mean that in a great way, because it's kind of like, it couldn't have been better. It's kind of like this juxtaposition of harmony versus sentimentalism is a very, very, such an important point, because if you're just about harmony, short-term harmony, because you want to actually, a lot of time we want to create harmony because we want to feel good because we don't want to handle confrontation. We don't want to handle being ostracized. We don't want to handle the difficulty of the fact there's not harmony. So you're addressing, what if there's not harmony? How do you get to harmony? And I, and honestly, my stomach was feeling queasy the whole way through because I just I suddenly realized, well, I don't know anything. And how am I going to get back to harmony from all of these points that you're making, which are all correct, and I've got direct experience of nearly every one of those feuds you're talking about. And the only place I've got to, and I'm relishing it, because this is like, I feel like, it's like anything in, in, in Siddhanta, is, is like we should go into these debates and these discussions with people who have different views, not to just try and destroy the argument, but just try and understand the argument so you can actually dismantle it powerfully, rather than just dogmatically going about your argument without understanding where their arguments come from. You need to understand the other side to actually properly assert your, the position given in Siddhanta. And so the, the only conclusion I've come to in what you're saying is that <clears throat> harmony in the long term is always prevails, but the timing's not always up to you, right? So while the dispute or the disharmony is seemingly existing externally, we have to surely find a way where we can disagree, but treat each other with dignity so that 
and I, you intimated it somewhere through your explanation where where harmony may come between Iskon and Gordian Map eventually. You can see it is happening at a non-organized level anyhow. So if somehow we can treat people who have different opinions with dignity and, and still disagree with them, then we don't leave seeds of hatred and seeds of offense in their heart so they don't bear fruit later. So somehow we need to find a way of being loving and non-violent while at the same time asserting what we're given by Parampara's truth. Um, have you got any thoughts on that, on those ideas? Because you've really triggered a lot of things in my, in my heart. The Shirdi already has 26 qualities. Uh, one of those qualities, of course, is pure bhakti. So the quality of, say, being a poet, you know, is one of the qualities mm -hmm. of pure devotee. Mm -hmm. But all these other qualities, they are, in one sense, can be related to as material, you know, poet, poet, you know, poet. Yeah. But the main principle is bhakti, pure devotion. So harmony is also one of the qualities that we know we like to have, mm -hmm. but still the main quality is shuddha bhakti. Yeah. Shuddha bhakti is there that all these um, separate, you know, wonderful ideals will always manifest. But if Shuddha Bhakti is not there, then even if there's an attempt to achieve a particular quality like harmony, it may not or may or may not succeed. So I guess Sangha Siddha Bhakti. And Sangha Siddha Bhakti, you know, you're trying to develop certain qualities like truthfulness. But you know, there's a whole story of uh Shiman Bhagavatam, uh, Harish Chandra. Who was always truthful, but then his guru Vishamrita, you know, showed him, you know, that there's more beyond just truthfulness, you know. So we should honor these qualities: harmony, poetry, truthfulness, honesty, and you know, all these things. But they follow in the footsteps of those who are having Shuddha Bhakti, chanting Shuddha Nam. Right. So if we remove our offenses, 10 offenses to the holy aim, then we'll be on the platform of chanting the holy name, pure holy name. If we chant the pure holy name, you know, the love of God will pervade our being, and then harmony will come naturally. Without even separate endeavor, which is what yeah. we have in Shanga Shuddha Bhakti. Aim for a Swarup Siddha Bhakti rather than a Rupa Siddha Bhakti, right? Yeah. Beautiful, Maharaj. Really, really beautiful. Thank you so much. So much. Yeah. I've got a lot of growth from that. And I'm going to, I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to dive into that more deeply. Thank you.